Hey everyone, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for joining me here today for another episode from QTPTutorial.net. That is my site. Don't forget it. Go there and become QTP gurus for free. So anyways, I wanted to thank you all so much for joining me today. And I am really excited because we have an awesome episode. I am going to teach you guys today about identifying objects and I'm going to make you guys experts in it. And let me tell you a quick story in that through my countless hours of expertise and experience in the real world, it's sad how many times I've experienced an automation engineer who has no idea how to recognize objects with QTP. And when I find out that this individual can't even recognize objects correctly, it shocks me because it's the real foundation of automation. And if you can't identify an object that's dynamic and that's changing, then I honestly am not sure what you're doing as an automation engineer. So what I want to do here for you guys today is I want to help you to avoid and not be those charlatan automation engineers that I've experienced. I want you guys to comfortably walk into your workplace, see an application, and identify the objects correctly so that when things change, your objects don't fail. So let's go ahead and get started. Let me take you on a journey. Just come with me. It might be a little crazy at first, but I promise that it will end in full clarity and understanding once we're done. So imagine that we have this beautiful car. Okay? This is just a car. Just imagine. And in programming world, because technically we're going to be writing code in QTP, this car is known as an object. An object, well, what is that? Some of you guys may think of an object as a thing, but in the programming world, an object, it has two properties. It has a state and it has a behavior. That's it. That's what an object is. So for example, this car, it has a state of driving. It has a state of color, which is green. Some behaviors it has are accelerate, decelerate, turn left, turn right, maybe crash, maybe blow up. Those are its behaviors. Do you guys understand it's kind of what an object can do? Okay? So some states are its color, its appearance, maybe it's a four-door, a two-door, okay? So that is an object. Now, it's very important that from here on forwards, we think of everything as an object, okay? Even, you know, a person, a person is an object. A person has a state where, you know, they have hair color, eye color, height, and so on. And the person has behaviors. A person can eat, we can talk, we can design tutorials about QTP, and so on and so forth, okay? Now, let me do one more thing and create another car. Okay, let me put them side by side. Okay, now, can anyone tell me what is the difference between this car and this car? How do you differentiate between this car and this car? Well, to be honest, really right now you can't. They're both lime green. They're both the exact same dimensions because I copied and pasted this box and there's no way to differentiate, right? There is one thing that I will teach you. It's a little bit more advanced. It's called an ordinal identifier. That is used in QTP and it's one way to identify right now, but we'll get into that later. Anyways, so right now, just imagine there's really no way to differentiate between this car and this car, right? But what? If I did this, okay, can you differentiate between the two cars now? Sure you can, because one is yellow and one is lime green, okay? And what did I do here when I changed this car to yellow? I changed its state. And in VB script, 
a state is also known as a property, okay? So this yellow, it's also a property, okay? And the property, we're going to call it color, okay? The property is color, and every property has a value. And let me do it like this. So now, we have a property, okay? And this property is called color, and it has a value. What is the value? Yellow, okay? So that's how we differentiate this car from this line green car. It also has a property, okay? But its property is not yellow. It's lime green, okay? And that's how we differentiate between this car and this car. Do you understand? We differentiate by its state, okay? But now, both will have the same behaviors because both can accelerate, both can decelerate, they can turn, and so on and so forth. But maybe this car is now two-door. Let's say this one has one door. Now it has a new behavior because it can open door one or it can open door two. Okay? That's another way to differentiate. So they can have different behaviors, but for our purposes, they're the same, okay? The only thing that differentiates them is their property. So, let me do this, guys, okay? So I just added two more cars. Now, how can I differentiate between this car and this car? Or this car and this car? Because again, now, these two, for example, have the same property, which is called color, and the value of that property is yellow. Well, we can't, except for using the only thing left over, and that's called an index. That's another property, okay? And this index, for example, if I did this, okay? Now, can you differentiate between the cars? Yes, because this one has a 1, and this one has a 2. And this is an index, and what is it? Its value is an integer, okay? This allows me to differentiate between this car and this car when all of their properties are the same, but their index is different. And that's what separates them, because I can have many more yellow cars but they're going to have a different index, and that will allow me to separate them, okay? To tell the difference between all of the cars. And same thing with the lime green, okay? So, why am I telling you all this? Well, it's because in QGP, the ultimate goal to identifying an object is to find a unique one. If you have 500 cars on a page, and you need to identify this one. The goal is to figure out a combination of properties that will make it unique enough so that you can get this car and use its behaviors, and behaviors in VBScript come in the forms of methods, functions, okay? This is the same thing, just people refer to it in different ways. So. These methods, you want to access them, and you want to do stuff to this car. You want to test it, right? So you need to access this car's behaviors or methods, and then you can do stuff to the car. Okay? So now, we have all of these objects with all of these properties. Okay? And where are we storing all of these properties and their values. Well, right now, we are storing all this properties and the values in our brain, okay? So let me grab these guys. And 
they're being stored in our brain, okay? Let me try to symbolize a brain here. In here, we know that the property of this yellow car, the property being color, and this value being index, is value being yellow, okay? It also has a property called index, and that index is one. We see it, and we know it because of our brain, okay? Same thing for this car. We know that it has a property called color, and that value of color is lime green. And it also has a property called index, and the value of that index is one, okay? And everything is being stored in our brain, and that's how we know how to differentiate between each object, okay? Now, finally we get into QTP, because you may have been wondering, what the heck is going on here? Why is this guy talking about brains and square cars? But trust me, it all had a purpose. So, let me go ahead and open the application, and we'll take a look. In fact, I just saw that we're at the 15 minute mark, and I think it's the perfect time to transition to my next video. Oh, by the way, guys, I forgot to mention that now I think I'm going to start recording my videos in short 15, 20 minute segments just to see how you like it. So give me your feedback. Let me know what you think on this compared to the 45 minute videos that I had before. Okay? Hey, guys, see you in the next session, session two.